Good evening, everybody. I see people are, uh, the attendee numbers are ticking up. So just gonna give people another few moments to filter in and then we will go again, ahead and get started. You can see on, on the screen that the meeting is being recorded and we will provide the link on the project webpage. The project webpage is also listed there next to uh, project information. As attendees on this call, first of all, thank you for attending. Um, everyone for the, for the sake of um, being able to clearly communicate, everyone will be muted. Um, in order to communicate with the presenters, please put your questions in the Q&A box and we will uh, address them. We'll have, um, I think, ample time at the end of the presentation uh, to go through Q&A. It's fine with me if you put questions in during the presentation, knowing that some of them may get answered by the time we get to uh, the Q&A session. The, um, the Q&A box uh, should be uh, available uh, on your uh, control panel. And I do see a comment asking us to enlarge the, the slide. Um, so I'm not sure, Rachel or Michelle, if that's something that you are able to do. It is as large as it can go right now. And I know what I just did is I, um, I slid the little slider bar next to the um, video icons over to the right and that increased the size of the slide a little bit on my screen. Um, so um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, and apparently that was, that was helpful, great, thank you. Okay, so Rachel, we can go to the next slide and, and um, you can introduce yourself as the project manager when, when your presentation begins. I won't, I won't do that now. Um, my name is Darren Fluche. I am the division chief for park planning and stewardship. Um, and very happy to, to welcome you all to this meeting. Go to the next slide, Rachel. So our agenda for this evening is to um, welcome you all to this uh, virtual community meeting. And I'm gonna start off by providing some background uh, on the project to explain uh, where the idea came from and where we are in the process. And, um, and then we're going to hand it over to uh, council member Andrew Friedson uh, for some additional welcoming remarks. After that, uh, our project manager, Rachel Newhouse, is going to walk us through um, some of the concepts for the park and the dog park. Um, and then we will move on to Q&A and um, have opportunities to engage with you all, hear from you all, um, and solicit some feedback and, and ideas uh, with the intention of wrapping up at 8.30. Okay, um, so what is the purpose of tonight's meeting? Well, uh, we, wa we want to share uh, information with you uh, on where the idea for this project came from um, and, and what the idea is. So we're gonna share kind of our initial uh, concept with you all. I will, I will just note uh, right up front that this is what we call a concept or a very preliminary uh, sketch uh, plan for, uh, the, I, for the park, and for the dog park. Um, it's not a detailed engineering drawing and, and it's just something uh, to share with, um, with you all as members of the community to get feedback on. Um, and then we would move from here to progress into you know, specific uh, designs. And so just to set expectations um, there. Um, we, want, we want to gather feedback from you. Go, go back again, Rachel. Uh, we wanna gather feedback from you on the dog park uh, concept. And um, Rachel's gonna talk a little bit about um, other improvements that may be possible um, if we do this project. So. Okay, go ahead, next. So um, where did the uh, idea for this project come from? Well, um, first of all, there is a well-documented demand for dog parks in the county. I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a moment. Um, 
we we hear um, repeatedly for the need for dog parks in our park system. And uh, this location was identified as one of several candidate sites um, in a recent dog park suitability study that the parks uh, planners conducted. And uh, we also had really strong uh, community requests for, um, for an expansion of the park on this site and specifically uh, a dog park. Um, and so we took that um, request you know, very seriously, but we wanted to explore uh, the, the kind of how realistic um, the site was for that. And Rachel um, and the team did a lot of work on that that she will walk you through to identify the feasibility of a dog park on this site. Then we scheduled a public meeting uh, and we knew it was really important to make sure that we were getting feedback from the immediately adjacent neighbors. So Rachel uh, hand delivered a flyer and knocked on doors um, and um, spoke with neighbors or dropped off a flyer to let people know about this meeting, which is an opportunity uh, to discuss the project with you all. So we made sure that the folks closest to the park were the first to know uh, about the meeting uh, and this opportunity to discuss the project. Um, we then um, did our more typical community notification through a press release and um, yeah, emails and messages to homeowners associations and community groups in, in the area. And that brings us to today's uh, meeting. So I mentioned the documented need for dog parks. This is a, a slide from our um, 2022 Parks Recreation and Open Space Plan. We call that PROS. And um, we did a, uh, a randomized, a random sample survey of members of the county, residents in the county. Um, we asked them a number of questions to sort of assess the various uh, needs and demands for different types of facilities in our in our park system, what people liked, what people um, didn't prioritize as highly. One of the questions we asked was if they felt like uh, particular amenities were, the provision of particular amenities were adequate or partly adequate, or that there weren't enough of a particular type of amenity in the county. And only six uh, amenity types had more than 10% of the residents saying there was not enough uh, of a particular amenity but dog parks had the highest uh, share of the respondents who said there were not enough uh, dog parks in the county, uh, nearly 15% respondents. So, um, you know, clear demonstrated need and, and, and pros is kind of our policy document that, that tees us up to try to find opportunities to uh, provide some of these more, uh, these types of amenities. And then um, to identify, you know, what brought us to Willard Ave neighborhood, neighborhood Park? Well, a few years ago, park planners did a suitability study to identify which parks might be good candidates for for dog park based on um, areas that had a high density residents, so people that need don't have yards and uh, need um, need dog parks to let their dogs get exercise off leash. Um, we needed to make sure that within a given park it was outside of environmentally sensitive areas like stream buffers. Uh, we wanted the, the park and the dog park to be walkable so people could walk their dog to, to the park. Um, we wanted to make sure there was adequate size and, and Rachel will walk through kind of the, the analysis that she's done uh, to determine that for this site. And we wanted to make sure that there were good visibility so that people um, felt safe and secure um, in, in the dog park. and. Um, had good engagement with, with the street and with the, the rest of the park. So it was relatively um, safe from a personal security standpoint. So, um, but it's not just all analysis and, and data crunching. Um, we, uh, we received really strong uh, feedback from uh, the community, uh, members of the community, leaders in the community. Um, this is just a couple of the letters that we received, one from the, the town of Somerset, one from the Citizens Coordinating Committee on Friendship Heights, and um, one from the Brookdale Citizens Association and the Village of Friendship Heights. And that, that was a motion uh, passed unanimously. Um, this is just an excerpt from the meeting minutes um, where uh, a motion that, um, that said, um, um, 
expressing support uh, for uh, the park and uh, support for the creation of a dog park on that property. Um, so we um, wanted to be responsive to that. We, um, we have engaged with uh, Council Member Friedson, who I will pass uh, the mic to um, right after this slide. Um, and, um, and that's more or less the background on what, on what brought us um, to this meeting tonight, um, a combination of kind of uh, staff analysis and really, really strong public uh, demand, I would say, for, for an amenity like this in, in this location, of course, that doesn't mean every single person is gonna um, feel that way. And so we wanna, we wanna hear from folks and we wanna, we wanna have a good conversation about it. Um, the overall purpose of the project is to address that community mean, need I just mentioned for, for a dog park and be responsive to um, the feedback and the requests that we got from the community. Um, I'll just note that in the event of um, bringing in a dog park uh, project to Willard Ave Neighborhood Park, uh, that would provide an opportunity for us to make other minor park improvements. We're, we don't have this slated to be a major park refresh, but um, while we're there, there's an opportunity for us to solicit um, information from you today on what improvements uh, might be needed. And uh, Rachel's generated a few ideas based on park staff um, uh, uh, work on the on the site, including um, improving park access, improving visibility, and um, integrating interpret interpretive signs uh, more into the park uh, to tell the story of, of the park. Um, so that is uh, the purpose of this meeting, the origin of of this project, and the particular purpose of this project to kind of give you a little bit of context. Uh, in one moment, we're going to have uh, Project Manager Rachel Newhouse walk through some of the, the concepts um, that she's been working on. Uh, but first, uh, I'd like to give Council Member Andrew Friedson uh, an opportunity to uh, welcome everyone and make a few remarks on this call. Uh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to join for this. I look forward to hearing. Uh, from residents. I'll be very brief uh, because you're not here to hear from me. We're, we're here for parks to hear from you. Uh, but I did want to thank everybody for, for joining. I particularly uh, want to thank the park staff for putting this together, for uh, engaging uh, as part of the outreach process for this particular project. And uh, wanted to just highlight the last piece that was noted about uh, additional uh, potential improvements. Uh, we've heard about uh, the dog park uh, specifically, but we've also heard about a number of other uh, aspects of the existing park that are there and potential improvements that residents would like to see. And uh, insofar as this could be an opportunity to do that, I hope that uh, folks will share with the Parks Department specific thoughts, ideas uh, about uh, that as well. So uh, I'm here to, to listen uh, and, and to uh, hear from residents uh, I'm very uh, interested uh, to, to be a part of this and just want to thank everybody for, for joining. Thank the Park Department uh, for your responsiveness on this and, and look forward to uh, hearing what everybody has to say and to continuing uh, this through uh, a uh, robust uh, public process. So thanks so much. So thank you. I'm Rachel Newhouse. I'm the project coordinator for this particular project. And I just wanted to show you all, you know, the park that you know extremely well. We have pictures of the half basketball court looking towards the exercise equipment. We have pictures of the playground. There's a picture of the historic bronze marker that's currently in the park. This is an entrance way into the park that you all are familiar with. Some picnic tables next to the basketball court and then the existing parking lot that has two handicapped spaces and two regular spaces. So we just wanted to make sure that, you know, people knew where the park was in context to other things. And specifically that this is a neighborhood park that's a walk to park. And it's within a half mile of the Friendship Heights Metro Station. So we wanted to compare what we're proposing tonight to the other dog parks that currently exist in Montgomery Parks. 
We have Cabin John Dog Park, 50,000 square feet. Only Manor, 42,000. Wheaton Regional Dog Park, 25,000. Dewey Local Park, 22,000. Black Hill Regional Dog Park, 22,000. Ridge Road Dog Park, 22,000. The Ellsworth Urban Park, which is 20,000. And then this park that we are proposing to you all tonight, 13,500 square feet. Um, then we also took a look at uh, dog parks in urban areas because the urban area dog parks have, you know, they're, they're surrounded by residential. They get used a lot because of the density. And we wanted to do a little bit of research on some of those that are in other areas. So one of the dog parks that we um, studied is Swamp Poodle Dog Park in Washington, D.C. It opened about two years ago. And it's small, it's 5,000 square feet and it is popular. It's very close to existing residents. The developer actually built this as part of their residential development project. And you can also see that the play equipment to the back is um, built up rather than out because it was such a small area. The Columbia Heights Dog Park in Washington, DC is another um, smallish dog park. It's 7,355 square feet. Again, you can see the proximity to the residential. Um, and you can also see this is actually on a metro uh, property. So you can see the vents that lead up from the metro are actually part of this park as well. And finally, we have the Pearl Dog Run is what they call it. The developer built this for the residents of their high rise residential um, residence that is right at the base of their building. So that's 7,600 square feet. The Willard Avenue neighborhood park. So here's our study area in red. The entire park is five acres. And the study area that we looked at was 15,000 square feet. One of the things that is very important to us um, in this project and other dog park projects is to sensitively locate the amenity. As you can see, most of Willard Avenue Park is in the 100-year floodplain. That's represented by this yellow hatched area here. And there are also steep slopes, which is represented in the pink and red here. So this particular piece of the park is out of the floodplain and out of the steep slope area, which makes it a better location for a dog park. And then if we zoom in a little bit, again, the steep slopes to the back, there's also forested areas to the back here. And this is the one sort of open area up on the knoll out of the floodplain. These are just some existing condition slides. This is, you're standing on the sidewalk adjacent to Willard Avenue looking towards River Road. And as you can see, the property slopes up and then it goes back. Um, and then there's the existing fence there. This is the uh, view of the house that currently sits on the property. Some know it as the Reynolds house. And this is looking back towards Friendship Heights and the high rises, and again, the steep slope and the existing driveway, which we plan to use as a maintenance drive. And then from the back of the house, this is standing on the trail that currently goes through the park. You can see what that you know, experience would be looking up into what could be the proposed dog park. So the goals that we had for this study, sorry, um, create a neighborhood scale and walkable dog park, improve the visibility into the park, preserve most of the existing trees, which you can see in this picture, are mostly surrounding the edge here, remove the park rental house. And then, like I mentioned, using the existing driveway as the maintenance access into the park. 
So this is a concept rendering of the park and the proposed dog park up here in the brownish area. You've got the basketball court down here, the existing playground here, the existing parking lot here, the Little Frawls stream. And then we'll talk about some ideas for the corner of the property here where we recently acquired those homes. So as we zoom in to the proposed dog park, you can see that it's, you know, that's made of a couple elements. First, there's the large dog area on this side, which is 9,300 feet. We have the small dog area on this side, which is 4,200 square feet. We have proposed a seating area based on requests from community outside of the dog park so that people can sit out there and just enjoy their neighbors and the dogs and, and socialize. Then we also have a seating and shelter inside the dog areas, vegetative buffering along this edge of the park next to the closest adjacent neighbor, and also some uh, shade trees proposed over here. And then we include all the elements that we normally have in our dog park program of requirements, which I'll go through in detail. But while we're looking at this plan, we have the trash cans on both areas. We have water fountains proposed in both areas. And we have the gate entrances, which is a special double gate entrance that leads you into the park that keeps the dog safe as you're getting them off leash. And I didn't mention, but back to the back of the park here is the stormwater management facility. This is to gather all the runoff from the dog park so that it doesn't go down the hill and into the stream. So our dog park program of requirements, we have fencing, double gate entry system, the surface, which we have a variety of options, a small and large dog area, seating, shade, water fountain for the dogs, a water hookup for hoses, um, and dog waste bags, receptacles, and then signage for the dog park. So one of the features is the double gate entrance. And what I've done is included pictures of um, examples from all over. These are just you know pictures of what they could look like. The more detailed design engineering, if we go forward with this, would determine exactly the size and style of the fence. The dog water fountain, you see you've got, you know, here where the pooches can reach. Um, and then we also have one for people and hose hookups to clean the area and have fun in the summer. This is an idea for what the seating area that would be outside of the dog park could look like. So just a small area with some benches. Uh, this is something that we are going to be trying in a proposed dog park up in the Fairland area, and it's a solar seating area. So, you know, we're looking into some innovative park furnishings. The fencing around the dog park can range from five feet to eight feet tall. Again, the style and height will be determined during the engineering phase. Um, the dog you know, shading and benches that happen or will happen in the park can be all different styles as well. And again, that will be decided during the detailed engineering of what that would look like. And then we would have trash receptacles with duty bags for help cleaning up. And there's, a, you know, at least three different types of surfaces that we've seen and used. There's crushed gravel. There's the wood chips, and then the then there's the turf surfacing. So again, that will be decided at detailed engineering. And then these are the dog park rules and regulations that we post in all of our dog parks. Um, I won't go through and read all of this, but I wanted to point out some things that you know dogs that bark persistently 
are prohibited. Um, and, you know, just to make sure you all are aware that the dog park would be open from dawn to dusk, similar to all our other park amenities. So we've done a lot of improvements to the Willard Avenue Park since we acquired it in 1977. It was developed in 1988 with most of the features that you still see today, the playgrounds, benches, exercise station, basketball court, parking lot, and the trails. But in 2013, we were able to renovate the playground and also add new exercise equipment. In 2019 and 2021, we acquired the properties on the corner of the Willard Avenue and River Road corner to the park. In 2021, we also completed a sewer pipe project to, that helped clean the stream, so that was done. And then here we are in 2022, talking about the dog park, a new entrance trail and historic signage that we would like to see in the park. And one of the things that Darren mentioned at the beginning that we'd also like to have a conversation with you about and get your ideas are some additional minor park improvements that we have seen a need for, but you might also see a need for some you know, improvements that we haven't considered yet. So the other possible project elements would be um, improved park access, improved visibility, and then the interpretation of the park and community history. As I mentioned before, we acquired the two houses on the corner of Willard Avenue and River Road. We could remove those houses and open up the visibility into the park. That would also allow us to add a new entrance walkway, pedestrian entrance walk into the park and widen the, um, these walkways slightly so that it becomes an easier maintenance access for our maintenance staff. We would add new park signage to the corner of the property. And then we would look for ways to do historic wayside um, interpretation. And the locations for those haven't been determined yet, but we, you know, they would be along the trails and in very visible areas for people to read. And then these are just some examples. You've seen the Willard Avenue Park entrance. The new entrance signs would be similar. And then if we talk about the history of the Willard Avenue Park, um, I don't know if all of you know this, but the Glen Echo Trolley used to run right through the middle of this park. The tracks have obviously been removed but that is a very interesting historic aspect of this park. So some of the themes that could be talked about with the public, and I wanted to make sure that you all are, are you know, aware that we really wanna work with you all on the history, interpretation, signage. We understand there's a lot of people in the community who know bits and pieces of history. So we would really, like to work with you. Our cultural resources staff is just beginning these ideas. So we'd like to incorporate your ideas into this signage and interpretation. Um, so when you send your emails to me, please may would like to work with us on this. But we have history on the land ownership and use prior to 1864. We are gathering information on the indigenous culture, farming and slavery that happened in the area, um, the federal employment and suburbanization, using the Reynolds House as an example of that, and the evolution of transportation from the Glen Echo Electric Railway to WMATA, and then the rise of high rises and changing demographics. So there's a very extensive history that we could um, delve into with you all. And the signage, historic signage itself, um, in this lower left-hand corner is the type of signage we're trying to do more and more of. It's the National Park Service style, and it mixes visuals and text, so it's much more engaging. Uh, people tend to stop and actually read it, look at the pictures, 
follow the timeline. Um, we would have bilingual content and also a QR code that would allow access to further information. And when these signs get developed, we would then remove the bronze marker um, to replace it with one of the newer interpretive signs. And then we mentioned some other improvements to the park, the things that staff has been thinking about, but we really want your ideas. Um, one is to possibly extend, expand the basketball court from a half court to a full court, and then look at ways of maybe getting some more parking, maybe reconfigure the pavement here slightly to get a few more spaces. So the status and schedule, we do have funding for this project. Um, as Darren mentioned, and we just showed you, we've done a test fit. We know the park, the dog park can fit um, and the orientation works and, you know, it all fits to the level of study we've done. So we can go on for doing detailed engineering design. We are at today's public in, you know, meeting and we want to review the input we've received to date and get more from you. And then if we move forward, we would do the detailed design in fiscal year 23, which we are actually in now with construction in fiscal year 24. So we could see this project, you know, within about a year or so built. So the next steps, well, here we are today with a public meeting question and answer. Here's all the information to the website, there's a link to the dog park suitability study if you want to see how we developed the sites that we determined as meeting the criteria. And then we would like you all to sign up for project updates, um, providing us your email and contact information. And once we've taken in all this review, staff will make uh, recommendations based on the analysis and the amount of public input that we are receiving. So I wanna thank you all for attending our meeting and we are now ready to go into the question and answer phase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we have received some uh, questions already and comments. Um, feel free to uh, continue to add them uh, to the Q&A as, as we go through um, and discuss. Um, I will try to do my best to um, respond to uh, the comments that we've gotten and the questions. Um, I may group some um, and address it if they're kind of covering the similar uh, themes. Um, so uh, Rachel, the, the slide is just blank now. Why don't you go ahead and th keep the, uh, the info slide back up so people can make note of those, um, those addresses. Um, while we just while we chat. Um, so the first comment we got was um, about considerate considering the residents on Willard Ave. Um, the this writer is saying the house is directly across the street uh, and they're concerned about a uh, noise and parking problems. Um, and uh, somebody else uh, asked a question about um, you know how how do people provide feedback? How do uh, residents on Willard Ave provide uh, feedback on this project? And so that's why I want to make sure that we're showing that slide. Um, they, you can put your feedback in the Q and A right now, and you can um, you can follow up with that that email. Um, yeah, the, the slide is still still black, Rachel. Um, so um, we had a a, a process question um, about you know the the sequence of our notification. This is something that we thought a lot about wanting to make sure um, that the Willard Ave neighbors um, were the first to know once we had a meeting schedule. Somebody, uh, an anonymous attendee is the way it comes through to me, says you collected motion uh, letters slash motions from neighborhood associations in March. Uh, why didn't you engage with the uh, immediate neighbors until July 1st about a July 20 meeting in the middle of summer when people are out of town and one day after the uh, primary voting occurred? Uh, it seems perhaps you wanted to avoid what happened in Norwood when immediate neighbors rose up in opposition, which is something I hadn't mentioned yet. So um, 
I, I'll just say in terms of Norwood, um, that was one of, I think, the precipitating events for those letters. The neighbors were, I think, in some ways responding to, the neighborhood associations were in some ways responding to Norwood. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but the letters do mention Norwood. And so I think they, um, they took it upon themselves to write those letters to us, maybe in response to Norwood in, in, in that context. Um, and so we didn't solicit those those letters. We we received those letters um, and then tried to be responsive to that request. And um, you know, there's always a chicken and egg um, issue. We um, we don't want to have a community meeting until we uh, have something substantive to say. And you can see the work that that Rachel. Um, you know, did to prepare for, the, for this meeting and, and the, the concepts that she was reviewing. Um, and so uh, we wanted to make sure that we, when we came to, to you all in the community that we, we were, you know, had some, some clarity about what uh, we would be uh, proposing. So it took us a little bit of time to do that. Uh, we did make a concerted effort though, uh, not to schedule a meeting in August because as bad as, July may be, um, in terms of vacations, we know that August is really, really uh, uh, a challenging time to uh, expect folks to be in town. So we did, we, we were as conscious of that as we could be uh, while still doing our, our due diligence on, on preparing this, uh, this presentation. Um, so related to that, I have somebody saying that they live adjacent to the park and never heard about this um, until they received a third party notice. Um, sorry about that. We, we did door knock. Um, um, on the addresses that were immediately across the street from the park and, and the addresses that are kind of located inside the park. Um, so, um, yeah, sorry about that if we, if, if that notice didn't get to you and should have. Um, one person notes, and this is a good question, uh, I think for, for you, Rachel, um, the space at, um, at Willard Ave is very small for a reasonably sized dog park. Uh, there's definitely insufficient parking in the vicinity and Willard Ave Park um, as it exists does not need a dog park to satisfy the local neighborhood uh, demand. So Rachel, why don't you speak if you, if you would a little bit to um, the sizing of the park and how we, how you kind of thought, thought through that question, the, the sizing of yeah, the park. Yeah, yeah. We try to do dog parks that are 10,000 square feet and larger. Um, the one that we are proposing, as I mentioned, is 13,000 and more. Um, so we felt that we had sufficient space to do the dog park. Um, and it would be, it would be a, lar a, a smaller, the slide that um, Rachel showed earlier indicates that it would be a um, a smaller dog park than they would probably be the smallest dog park in the uh, in the in the county as far as um, the ones that we've documented and the ones that are um, Montgomery Parks and so we do recognize that this is a, a neighborhood park so it's scaled down relative to some other dog parks that you may see in the county. Rachel, you could show um, you could show that that relative size um, sure. slide again it would be great and maybe. Show Go back to presentation mode because it would be awesome. Um, in terms of parking, uh, again, yeah, it's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood park, so we um, anticipate that this facility would be primarily a walk-to facility. Um, you know, it is a it is a fairly um, walkable community with um, apartments nearby where folks don't have backyards, and so we feel that this is a park that would serve um, the apartment. Uh, residents uh, well and um, you know see some demand um, that wouldn't require uh, driving and by not not really providing um, you know we're, we're not going to you know convert significant areas for, for parking. Rachel mentioned trying to um, reconfigure the existing parking to squeeze out maybe one or two more spaces but we're not really um, providing parking here so our expectation is to be a primarily a, a walk to destination for for dog walkers. Right, and there, so there's four spaces that we currently have for the park, two for handicapped and two for non-handicapped. And then there's parking along the road. Depending on how people park, there's about eight to nine spaces. So there's a total of, you know, 13 spaces for parking just in, for the general park. 
Um, somebody says, how can we make this happen faster? This is a great idea that the community would like ASAP. Um, so obviously, you know, depending on the discussions that we have tonight uh, and thereafter, uh, we'll have some impact on on the on the speed. We, you know, we could we need to make sure that we're you know, covering our bases and and being you know deliberate. Um, but in the event that we over the next couple of weeks um, get a green light, then we could um, uh, you know start the design uh, phase and and. Uh, Rachel had some, I won't try to remember exactly the timing that, that Rachel had, but you can go to that, that timing slide. In terms of speeding it up, um, it's just a question of, um, you know, making sure that this is a, a project that's, that's um, you know, a, a benefit to the community and, and then, we'll, then we would move forward uh, at, with all deliberate speed at that point. Um, let me just find another question. Oh, <laughs> I think somebody told me to stop rocking back and forth. Sorry about that. Um, some opposition to the dog park from uh, residents of Willard Ave. Um, some commentary about engaging with the, whether or not the citizens associations, you know, engage with the, every particular individual before writing their letter. I'm sure that um, not everybody got, you know, was engaged in that process, but they're making their best judgment. Um, okay, sorry, just trying to catch up to. Uh, if we want to voice support, who do we contact? Who is the decision maker or person interested in input from the community? So that's uh, that's Rachel, and also the link um, that I think should be in the chat. Um, can you can use that link to provide uh, any feedback that you would like. Um, somebody asked a question about uh, demolishing the house and, and its historical significance. Um, so um, this is, you know, something that we have been. This has been a park rental house, and um, we had been we had received requests from the community to, you know, convert that that house into uh, more of a, a park amenity. So that was part of the um, part of the impetus for the project. Um, is it possible to make the seating area somewhat larger? Uh, Rachel, do you want to speak to that? Yes, thank you. Um, sure, we can look at, um, you know, enlarging that seating area. This is just, you know, very preliminary. So I think that's a, a good suggestion and we'll look into it. Thank you. Okay, a um, question about uh, the timing of funding and whether or not it's related to the end of the fiscal year. Um, it's, it's not really, we, we would have access to funds for this project um, at, at any point. Um, please tell us more about the water runoff pool area. That's a reference to the stormwater management facility. Uh, is it basically a cesspool for dog waste runoff? Uh, will it concentrate dog waste odors? Um, and no, so it's, it's important to note that, you know, when Rachel reviewed the uh, park rules, um, one of the rules is, is the expectation that folks clean up after their dogs. Um, our observations in our existing dog parks is that uh, compliance is, is reasonably um, good. Um, and then we do have, you know, we do have regular uh, maintenance um, of our dog parks, and we are developing a um, we are developing a um, uh, a dog park maintenance strategy to make sure that our dog parks stay clean and, and wouldn't uh, wouldn't have excessive uh, runoff. Okay, I'm told that the questions are coming in fast and furious, and I should I should speed up. Um, okay. Um, Questions about the decision process and and having folks um, have their um, their opinions heard. Um, this is this is part of that right now. Uh, we will, if I don't get a chance to um, read your question tonight, um, we can uh, we will be reviewing them uh, after the fact, um, and we can provide additional uh, 
Q&A that summarizes some of our responses to the discussion. And again, if folks want to uh, follow up with emails or with um, additional comments, there's, there's the link available. And Rachel, you can show that. Some folks expressing uh, not supporting the dog park, a few folks supporting the dog park. Um, few parking spaces available. Um, are you assuming that most users will walk to the park? Yes, we're assuming that uh, primarily folks will, will walk to this park. Um, it's the, the scale will not be uh, necessarily such that it will be a, it's seen as a, a regional destination. Um, if houses are across the street, then they can, okay. Um, I love your plan. Um, what what will we make of of the number of the characterized as a handful of objections? Um, well, we we're just going to have to weigh uh, everything that we hear, the the positive and the negative. Um, I guess in that spirit, I'll I'll read a positive comment. Thank you so much. This is a great project. Uh, we and our dog are so happy you're doing this. Um, who will maintain the park? Um, there's a problem with litter in the park now. Little Falls Creek Alliance does sponsor occasional volunteer cleanups, but more is needed. Um, so in terms of the, the overall park maintenance, that, that's our, our operations team uh, maintains the park and they would maintain uh, the dog park as well. As I mentioned, we are developing a, um, a dog park maintenance uh, strategy to, to make sure we are um, developing, you know, that we're, that we're maintaining the, the dog park as well as the overall park. Um, in an adequate manner. Um, I, this is a thoughtfully, thoughtfully prepared project, which will greatly enhance the neighborhood if we support the proposed project. A clarification uh, about whether or not the Citizens Association got, got input from residents before submitting the letter. Um, I, all I can speak to is our receipt of the letter. Um, the current park is quiet. Won't removing houses make it noisier? Um, so we are, I think that it's a reference not only to the, to the house on the dog park site, but also uh, the two houses parks acquired uh, on the corner. This, those parks, those houses were acquired in order to provide uh, better access to the park, uh, including the maintenance access that Rachel mentioned. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know that um, necessarily removing the houses will, will make the park noisier, there's certainly opportunities to plant trees um, in, in those areas. Um, a question about water fountains and a hose hookup. Uh, are they a year round feature? Is it possible to expand the hose area to make a dog washing station? Um, that is that is something that we can explore. Uh, Rachel, I don't know if you had any, if you have any more to add uh, to that question about, um, water fountains for the dogs being year round and whether or not we could have a, a hose area dog washing. The, the water bowl, the, you know, the, the base of the water fountain would be year round. As far as the hoses and dog washing station, like you said, Darren, that is an idea that we will look into and explore. Great, thank you. How is the dog park policed with regards to dogs misbehaving or barking persistently? So, um, you know, this is something that residents can contact park police um, and uh, and register complaints and issues. You know, in our in our existing dog parks, this does happen on occasion. Um, I think one or two uh, dog walkers have been have been banned from from our dog parks. Um, it's not a um, it's not a persistent problem, but it does it does happen, and uh, park police um, will respond to all. I know there's some very active comments. You should give them a few minutes. Okay. A dog park keeps dogs off the street and off of neighborhood yards. A dog park socializes dogs so they're not aggressive. It's in everyone's best interest to have a dog park community. Dog park is a good idea, but we need to recognize that it will change the nature of this little park. It is now contemplative, even with the basketball court, and offers great views of nature uh, and homes uh, nestled in the trees. 
not unique, just unusual. That's a, appreciate that comment. There's a question of what, whether, whether or not, Rachel, there's any other areas uh, in the park outside of the floodplain, um, like across from the parking lot. I don't know if you can pull up that visual again. I'll, I'll pull that up. It's a very small area, but I'll pull up the visual. And here we go. So this is the area that the person was probably talking about. It also has some, it's broken up by steep slopes, which is unfortunate because it is somewhat out of the, the floodplain according to these maps. Whereas the site up here is not, you know, all the steep slopes happen to the back and out of the study area. So that's why we chose this location. Um, and speaking of steep slopes, somebody asked about, um, is the dog park too close to the basketball court in terms of folks, um, the dogs interacting with kids who play basketball there? Um, Rachel, yeah, and, the, yeah, and the, do the dog park will be fenced. Um, so we don't expect any kind of interaction with people playing basketball. Um, the dogs won't be down there, except for people who are walking their dogs through the park, which happens frequently now. Um, so we don't anticipate um, any problems with basketball players and dog park users. Yeah, that's definitely part of the consideration. So there's some folks asking about opportunities to have a lot in person meeting instead of um, a virtual meeting. Yeah, um, I can I can talk about that, Darren, if you want. Yeah. I want to address a couple of things I think might be helpful to talk about right now and expand on a little bit. Yeah, you um, want to one introduce of them, yourself? I'm, oh, yes. Sorry. I'm Mitty Figueroa, Deputy Director of Montgomery Parks. Um, one of the questions we received was about the, the house and uh, why it's a goal of this project to remove the house and add an amenity. Um, the house is not designated historic and our um, parks and planning, cultural and historic resources staff do not believe it's eligible for designation. As a parks department, we do sometimes have houses in our parks. Often what happens is we acquire land. There's a house on, in the park. We don't have a current need to build something on the site. So we maintain the house and in order to sort of be good stewards of public resources, we um, will rent the house out to, to people who will live in it. But we are not primarily um, you know, residential landlords. So our primary goal is to deliver uh, park amenities to park users. So when we have an opportunity to remove a house and add an amenity, um, we usually we structure our leases and we make the plans to do that. So that's why in answer to that question, I just wanted to put kind of be very direct about that. That's why that's one of the goals of this project is to remove a current house on parkland because we have another needed use um, that we can put in its location. Um, another question I kind of want to go back to is uh, about process and next steps, because I just wanted to be clear to everybody. So um, public input, including, you know, a public meeting like this one and the input that we receive in a public meeting like this is one of the factors that we use to make a decision about how to move forward and whether to move forward and what the need is for a project like this one. So after this meeting, um, we will go back and review the input. We will make any needed modifications to our plans, and we will make a recommendation to parks leadership about whether to move forward with this project. It's in no way a done deal. We haven't made a final decision. This is why we are presenting to you a very early concept of this project, because we want to know sooner rather than later before we have invested a lot of parks resources into designing something, whether or not we're going to move forward with it. So after this meeting, again, we'll go back, we'll evaluate, 
will make any modifications based on the input that we receive and our parks leadership will make a decision about moving forward with the project. And at that point, we will share that information. Um, I think earlier, Darren shared with you that we have a project website where we have information about the project. Um, we will update that. We will also send out via email uh, notifications about next steps with this project. I, one more thing that I should just, while I'm talking and I have the opportunity to sort of clarify, um, we're talking today about a dog park project at this location because as Darren explained early on in the presentation, we have a dog park site suitability study that identifies this as one of the potential locations for a dog park in Montgomery County. We know we need, uh, we have about six Montgomery Parks dog parks in the county as a whole. We need about 25 in the next 10 years or so. Um, and this is one of the locations that's suitable for a dog park. Um, if we were to make the decision not to move forward with the dog park here, we would um, you know, move forward with a project at another park's location where we can you know, uh, build a dog park. And Darren, if you wanna move forward with like additional questions. Sure, yeah, that gave me a chance to, um, to look a little bit uh, yeah. at some of the kind of assessed they come stuff. come fast and furious. So. Yeah, they're coming in, they're coming in, but I think I can- It comes, I can, it's good to buy time. I take a, a, a group at a time. So um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of process questions. You're talking about this like it's a done deal. Um, you waited until you had all your plans to inform us, not solicit input. You presented letters, you got support, but no mention of community associations who did not support it. So just to speak to that, um, I, basically we're just, we're presenting um, uh, this idea in response to, you know, some formal requests for it and, and our own analysis uh, that suggests this would be a good location. And this is the opportunity that this is the moment of soliciting input and getting feedback. So nobody missed anything, nothing's been decided. Um, this is the process. Um, and we appreciate you know, everybody's comments. And as Mitty said, you know, we will we will assess everything and uh, and make a judgment based on you know what we're hearing and and um, you know kind of where that where that leaves us. Um, so this is you know it's like I said earlier, um, you know you know we want we want to be able to provide some informed uh, proposals to get people's response to. If we come too early in the process, yeah. what, I, what I want people to understand is if we come too early in the process, then people say to us, this idea is half-baked. Go back and work on it some more and then come back to us. If we come too late in the process, then people say to us, why are you presenting us a done deal? It's very hard to walk that line and find that right precise moment where you have enough information that you can share with people so they can give you informed feedback versus you've gone too far and you've spent a lot of staff time and resources and the community understandably feels like it is a done deal. So we hope that tonight we are coming to you early enough in this process, what we are showing you is a very initial concept that is flexible enough that if you give us input, feedback, feedback ideas, we can still incorporate them and it is in no way a done deal. Thanks, Mindy. Um, yeah. So, speaking of feedback, so one of the one of the um, questions that's been coming up is about noise. What provisions are you making to not disturb uh, neighbors? And Rachel, maybe you can show the tree buffer and the and speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So. Um... This is something we thought about a lot. We realized that there's a, an adjacent resident right here. So we are proposing a vegetative buffer along the, the property line here. We also know that notice that the neighbor has a lot of buffering along their property line. Um, we've also, in our research, found that smaller dogs tend to bark more often um, so we place the smaller dog area farthest away from this existing resident. Um, and 
we have done research as far as you know how many dogs you know six dogs uh in a dog park if they're all barking at once i have a certain decibel i think it was 73 decibels um so the the you know we do know how loud it could get but we also have the signage that talks about you know if you cannot have an it's incessantly barking dog in this area or you will get cited. Um, yeah, let so me let me just let me just um, build on that a little bit. Thank you so much, Rachel. So it is a very understandable and legitimate concern that people would have about a dog park. You know, noise related concerns about a dog park, and and certainly when we've built dog parks in the past, that has been some of the input and feedback and honestly, some of the objections that people have raised to building a dog park. And I can I can certainly say that Ellsworth Dog Park in Silver Spring, we heard a lot of concerns about noise. I think in reality, um, we've had very few complaints about noise coming from dog parks. The whatever barking occurs is, is generally intermittent and the dogs tend to be kind of happy. So they're not barking incessantly as a dog would if it were left alone in a backyard. That said, we are sensitive to people's concerns about this. And we do have park rules and dog park rules specifically that require people to keep their dogs under control generally and specifically to stop their dogs from barking incessantly and to remove their dogs if they do this. Now, these rules tend to be community policed. People who want to have a dog park and um, want to have more dog parks and facilities like this tend to try to follow the rules because they want to be good neighbors. There's inevitably every now and then somebody who doesn't want to follow the rules. And if they, per, they, if they violate the rules repeatedly, we will enforce these dog park rules. And very rarely, but it has happened, someone who is a persistent violator of the dog park rules, including barking, has been and can be um, banned from using one of our dog parks. It's obviously very rare because in reality, we find that most people try to follow the rules. Okay, um, I'm catching up on comments. Um, uh, why am I only reading positive comments? We're, we're trying to address um, all the comments, uh, including noise. So um, thank you, Mitty, for, for that. Um, one of the other things that is coming up is, um, is the house on the site and questions about whether or not it's a, um, a designated historic house and, and why um, we would um, remove the house or dem demo the house instead of, um, you know, convert its use into something else, which is, a, you know, a reasonable, um, you know, question. Uh, it is an older house um, constructed in 1899. Um, and um, there, I know that there's some interest in, among the commenters um, and, and some folks that have been contacting us uh, to preserve the house. Um, I'll just say that the, the Reynolds house is currently not designated on the uh, locational access or the uh, atlas, sorry, uh, or the index of historic sites or the Montgomery County Master Plan for Historic Preservation. Um, while the, um, the preservation of an undesignated historic structure on property is always, it's always desirable, um, but that goal of preservation is, is weighed against, you know, other goals of recreation and, and other amenities. Um, that the Parks Department um, and um, our par Parks Decision Makers need to decide um, on the best priority. Um, and so that's, the, that, that's where we are with, with that house currently is that, that we would use the space for uh, a park amenity. I hope that answers that, that question. Um, someone said, can my question be answered, but I don't know. I don't know what their question was. Um, if folks want to make any uh, negative comments about the, the park, I, I will read them, I promise. Um, when the park was first developed, we were promised that the basketball court would be half court for pickup games. If it's converted to full court, it will be primarily used by teams and regular people will not be able to play. So I appreciate that, that input there. 
Okay. Um, this is a shame. The moderator is choosing questions about water fountains or lack of parking. There are lots of neighbors vehemently opposed, and he's just answering uh, supportive ones. Um, happy to read some of that. Um, dog trainers say a dog park is a bad idea. Uh, it untrains dogs, teaches them to disobey their owner because it's more fun to run and play with other dogs, and they're constantly more aggressive when they leave uh, the dog park. Uh, and then they continually go when they leave the dog park and when they continually go to the dog park. Uh, you are deliberately ignoring many other questions and comments. I really promise I'm doing my best. Um, we I are really know. trying. The comments <laughs> come in fast and furious and Darren is trying his best and he's actually focusing, I think, a little bit more on negative comments in order to make sure that those get a full airing. And, and I do know that there are honest differences of opinion about dog parks, but what we know is that people want them. There's a strong demand for them. Um, concerned that you aren't letting us voice if you're picking what to discuss, tuned in late. Um, what are we're getting questions about what what some elected officials' positions are in the park? I, I can't speak to that. Yeah, and please know that um, after this meeting, you can continue to email us with your questions and comments, and we'll get back to you. More questions about the more requests to preserve the historic house. Uh, we, the residents, have issues with the dog park. Um, we're making it sound like it's a parks decision, not a public input based decision. Um, do you want to speak to that again, Minnie? Yeah. So let me explain again. So we use a number of factors, including things like data and needs analysis um, and public input to determine. Um, what, uh, what kind of amenities to build in our park. So this is one public input, a meeting like this one is a very important factor. It's not the only one. Um, we don't make all of our decisions about parks, infrastructure and amenities by plebiscite because that's just not really a functional way to run local government. But we do wanna hear input from communities because often when we get the input, we have a meeting like this one, we learned something new we didn't know before and we can factor that in, or we get some good feedback um, that allows us to modify a project in a way that ultimately makes it better. So this is a very important um, component of making decisions on what we build in our parks, um, but ultimately the decision makers, the planning board and the county council, they give us a budget and that budget specifies the things that they want us to build and do with that budget. And we are trying to fulfill that mission. And one of those things is building more dog parks in Montgomery County to satisfy the need. Thanks, Mandy. Um, Somebody's asking, will the project and other improvements be fully ADA compliant? Rachel, do you wanna speak to that? Yes. Um... As you can see on the screen, we have this access path that goes loops through both of the dog areas um, up to the shelter up here. And that is an ADA accessible access ramp so that it will be accessible. Thank you for the question. There's a question, um, why, would, why would the Parks Department give up the rental revenue for a project that would just be an ongoing expense? Well, because, you know, really the, the rental revenue is not a, a major, um, not really how we fund our park system. Um, and our goal is to really provide uh, amenities for folks that the people are, that would provide opportunities for people to be in our parks and engage in our parks. Um, so the, the rental revenue is not a, a significant factor. Um, without dog parks, no. Uh, now, now I'm uh, concerned about reading positive comments as they come into my eyesight, but I'll, uh, without dog parks, neighbors let their dogs off lease in the park and neighborhood, which is not safe. Our family's in favor of that park. Okay. Um, it's the oldest house in the neighborhood, uh, originally owned by a founder of the neighborhood. Uh, dear Mitty, thanks for your presentation. Uh, the, the needed use for the dog park is not the only one. Based on the survey presented at the beginning, there were other needs. I appreciate if you could say other options as well. Uh, which can affect positively to all neighborhoods. Um, so obviously, you know, 
Um, you know, there are a variety of amenities that we could include in the in the park. This is one that, based on our you know needs assessment and consistent um, you know survey data, um, we uh, you know it's it's a it's an important amenity that we're prioritizing for this uh, for a park system in this location. And um, you know noted the the request for it. Uh, but I will read. Uh, we the residents have issues with the dog park. Um, and I think I'm back. Um, Give us peaceful green space. We do not want noise and more problems. Uh, dog parts are bust. Um, why haven't park staff responded to earlier emails and questions? Um, yeah, I recognize your name. I think we have had some correspondence with you, sir. Um, we can continue to, to try to, to do that. We are not in favor. Present both sides. Lots of us are against it. I've read I've read a comment from this person uh, several times, so I'll probably probably stop that now. Um, okay. There's a couple people persistently voicing their opposition, so I'll, I'll try to see both of those. As an apartment dweller on Willard Ave with a dog, a dog park would be most welcome. As you say, we don't have a yard, so a common facility. Um, would there be any accompanying safety initiatives to make it safer to cross where it have to get to the dog park or slow traffic? Uh, that is something that we would have to look into. It's a, that is a, appreciate the comment. Um, we'd have to obviously work with um, DOT on, on Willard. Um, we need to take advantage of extending the park given the house being owned by parks for this purpose. And for the dog park as long as we can create a great dog park. Um, AKC has some guidelines worth looking at. It's really important to monitor the park and to intervene when necessary when dog owners are not being responsible. Um, the, there's a family right next to the park. They're retired. Um, uh, and we, we recognize that and uh, we take that seriously. Okay, um, you know, I will say in terms of the, the request for the, the buffer, we, we will take that into account and we, we you know, we could potentially, um, you know, move the, uh, move the dog park a little bit further from the, the street and from the, the neighbors so that there's a little bit more, um, a little bit more distance there. Um, who cites? What is this line you're giving us? Nobody is citing improper. Oh, in terms of, oh, this is a question about whether or not park police would really um, do any uh, enforcement of improper behavior. Um, and, um, you know, I think we do, we do do a lot of enforcement. Regarding noise, the decades experience, roadway transportation executive vegetation is no way an effective noise barrier. Okay. Uh, noted we're open to other suggestions for that. Uh, noise on a very busy road will cause, cause dogs to bark even more. Um, gave them three weeks notice, okay. Um, not being sarcastic, but I think you should bring 20 dogs to the area, stand across the street and see what happens. We know the difference between evaluation criteria and what you were describing. You still failed your own evaluation criteria, i.e. what situation was at the time of your evaluation, your suggested innovation intervention gives that neighbor what a massive 400 buffer and you have no one monitoring the park to control dogs. You'll allow people there until sunset, i.e. up till 9 p.m. in the summer. There's comments about the folks in the, the high rise apartment building. Um, certainly uh, welcome comments from, from them as, uh, as everybody. Um, I think this will be a this would be an amenity for that. Um, I'm gonna let uh, Michelle send me some comments to respond to, so I can target my facilitation here. Uh, uh, it looks like the only way into the park will be from Willard Ave. Why can't there be an entrance from the park itself? Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, Rachel, you want to talk about circulation a little bit? Yeah. So. Um... If we were to come from the trail down below up to the park, there is actually a dirt trail 
that you know lead you up to that this area right now um we'd have to look at you know how to uh, you know accommodate the trail with the slope and also not take trees down but i i i think it's a very good comment and we'll look into it further so getting a lot of questions about noise questions about parking question request to speak publicly um, how will you enforce the rules for persistent lawbreakers uh, if the only remedy is to call park police who most likely would not be there when park police arrive, or they will only be there to ensure the rule breaker won't come back. This park cannot be compared to other dog parks in Montgomery County because of the proximity of houses on Willard. The issues residents near Norwood Park raised are amplified for this park because it's smaller, closer to residents, closer to the stream, closer to the playground, et cetera. Uh, dog parks are wonderful opportunities for dogs to socialize. Um, I'm disappointed that no one has answered my question. I'm not. Got to repeat the question so I see it. Put the question uh, back in the chat so we can in the Q and A so we can see the most recent one. It's a question for you, Mitty. Do you live near a dog park? Do I live near a dog park? <laughs> We're getting that question a few times. Whether or not our I do. It's it's yeah. it's uh you know it's not right adjacent to my house, but I do live near a dog park. I live near a couple dog parks. Let us speak on air. Um, no one in Willard Tower uh, was ever notified. Uh, no door knocks. It's true, we didn't knock on doors in the tower. We knocked on doors only for the immediate adjacent neighbors. And then we did our, our usual um, outreach, uh, communication, press release, um, so forth uh, for the broader community. I think that's reasonable. We don't, we don't typically door knock uh, for projects, but we wanted to make an exception. Uh, some people are concerned. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mary. Yeah, so let me just address something. So, you know, I, I hope people can understand and appreciate that actually the way this kind of virtual meeting is working, it's, uh, it means that we can respond to more questions the amount of time we have, because if we were in a, um, an actual live in the flesh meeting, um, it's a much slower process. So we'd get only through a handful of these questions, but many of them are on the same topic. So Darren is trying to go through and distinguish the questions that are on a new topic and haven't been addressed in a separate question. But one thing that we can look into doing so that everyone can see is um, perhaps, and I haven't talked to our technical staff about this, but if we can you know, publish the full Q&A so everyone can see all the other questions and comments that were made. Um, and as I said, we'll continue to, to respond to the best of our ability to questions that people continue to have if they send us their comments uh, via email. Thanks, Minnie. Um, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, the community associations and whether or not they contacted their, uh, their members uh, in advance of writing their, their support. Um, I think I've alluded to that a few times, but um, that's being represented in the comments. Um, the front. Yeah, we, we can't speak to that. Yeah. Um, historic signs are good, but not a replacement for historically and architecturally important building. Okay, got it. Um, would we buy out neighbors who object to the park changes? Um, we have not discussed that. Um, uh, yeah, so there are there are questions now about um, home values and whether or not this would uh, depress um, home values. Uh, we would have to look into that uh, if, if there's any any evidence that 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 is the case. Obviously, you know, some folks would consider a dog park uh, uh, an amenity uh, that they would, you know, that for some buyers would be, uh, uh, you know, a bonus, uh, not a detraction. So we, we'd have to look into that. I don't have any research uh, offhand to, to cite for you there. Um, please, please, please address the residential proximity question. Um, suitability study talked about 200 feet being the preferred distance um, from a neighboring residence. Uh, does this do so? Um, this, this probably doesn't provide the full 200 feet that we were uh, looking for, but we also 
you know, are scaling down the, the size of the dog park. Um, and um, that was just a, uh, a guideline wanted to comment that your presentation is <laughs> professional. Now I feel uh, I feel uncomfortable every time I, I read a positive comment, but um, I will continue to read this way. Very, very impressed by your efforts and greatly appreciate it. Of course, there will be opposition negativity, sadly, but generally I know the community is very excited about this project. Um, appreciate that. Um, Michelle, keep keep them coming in the comments if you if you're able to uh, to feed me good. good one. And do we have a Darren, do we want to give an update on time? Yeah, so it's 821 now. Uh, we had scheduled this meeting to 830. I think we're we're starting to see some re repeated themes. Um, I don't know. I, we can certainly go to. Uh, but the themes are helpful. It's, it's good to know what the hot topics are that we have to think about and consider. This is not a question for you. It's information they did not contact the community, therefore you should not consider their letter valid. Okay, well, we were going with what we what we knew at the time. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> keep, keep sending me good ones though, um, Michelle, I appreciate it. So a lot more comments about the value of the, the neighborhood and real estate, uh, questioning the evidence of the community supports the project. Doubt that they're excited. Um, please address whether you will conduct an environmental impact study because we're worried about the condition of the creek and the greenway. Thank you. Um, that's a great comment. We will, um, you know, this project will go through um, our our um, environmental reviews and our stewardship uh, to make sure that we're minimizing uh, impacts to the, to the stormwater, uh, to the to the water quality. Um, including that stormwater facility that uh, Rachel mentioned, but thank you for that comment. There's a comment about uh, Newark Street Dog Park, two miles away in DC. Uh, did you consider the location of that park in your proposal? Um, you know, this is a, you know, that's a separate neighborhood uh, in Washington, DC. And, um, you know, we know that uh, we're pretty far behind the demand for dog parks, so um, didn't didn't uh, explicitly uh, uh, weigh that in. in the and two miles is a long way to walk with a dog. Yeah. I mean, some people will do it, but not everyone. Can you post your PowerPoint on the website? Yes, we can. Yes. Um, yes, we can. Uh, more more commentary about the historic uh, house. Thank you uh, for your comment. Thank you for your your uh, your phone calls as well. Other emails. Um, when did when you did not canvas the community? Okay, so I can't quite understand that one. Um, I appreciate the Zoom. All right, I made it be down to the bottom. I know I didn't get everybody, but I was trying to uh, find new topics and. Um, highlight some of the new uh, things that people were interested in. So I'll be the last comment with all the increased dog traffic and people using the parking right next to the playground. Do, uh, do you really consider the proximity of the playground to the environments of the park to be safe? Those dogs will be amped up on their way to and from the park and it would be easy for a toddler to get in their way. So um, that's obviously something um, that you know, we're really concerned about the proximity of the park to the playground. And, and we think that, you know, they're really on opposite sides of the park. Uh, obviously we, we, we do take that into account when we're identifying the location. I think what you're uh, highlighting here is whether or not people would be, you know, driving to those four or five parking spaces and then walking their dogs to the dog park. Um, you know, that, that may be an issue we'll have to think about. Thank you. Michelle, anything else I missed? Um, oh, uh, I see. The person that was commenting that I was not as, asking the question was asking also if uh, Council Member Fritzen lives across the street from the dog park, yes or no. So I will, I will, can't answer that. I can't speak to that. Um, 
the closest high rise building association did not provide a letter of support. Why not mention that? Well, I, I just highlighted the organization thing that triggered this, um, triggered our looking into this site. And this, this but people can still up. continue to people weigh in with letters of support or opposition or, opposition or constructive suggestions for how to make it better. Absolutely. Just scanning again to see if I missed anything. I hadn't covered. Um, few parking spaces available. Are you assuming that all or most users will walk to the park? Um, what about dog owners in the Norwood Park vicinity? Will they drive to Willard? Um, so, so this is ahead. this is a daring. So this is a we are considering this. This is a small dog park, and we are considering this as an urban dog park you know if uh you're this is a very pretty dense urban area and so this is a smaller format that will fit in this park and has a little bit less capacity and is located um in a way that will um, make it accessible to people to the many residents who live within walking distance to the park so we are not viewing it as a drive to amenity we're viewing it as a dog park that will serve the immediate surrounding community that said, if somebody wants to bring their dog and try to find a parking space, I suppose they can try, but uh, I don't know how much that will actually be happening. I think there's zone parking in the area as well, if I'm not mistaken, but Rachel may know. Yeah, there's uh, um, some signage that says parking for Brookdale residents only. Um, yeah, so I think, um, Mitty, you already mentioned this. I'm, I'm catching up on some of the comments here. Um, basically, folks are asking that we post all the comments um, in the Q&A as part of the public record. I think we can do that. We can figure out how to do that. Yeah. 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 Just so people can see what other, other folks had to say. Absolutely. We're happy to share that. Um, I guess I can read can read, um, this is another positive one, <laughs> apologies. Uh, sorry for including benches in, in seating areas. We've seen a huge increase in the number of dogs in the village. Lots of our seniors may not wanna own a dog, but would very much enjoy sitting and watching them play. As mayor of the village and immediate past chair of CCCFC, I thank you for moving forward plans for a dog park. I think it would be a very popular amenity with the residents of Friendship Heights and surrounding communities. I appreciate that comment. Um, so I think, you know, I, th I think mostly um, folks are at this point just complaining. I, I'm not reading their questions. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll post everything. Um, I think we I think we captured the spirit of, of all the comments. Um, yeah. And, and, and again, if you want to email us, we'll we'll, you know, make our best effort to we'll, we'll respond to you whether or not you will like our answer is another matter, but we will certainly try to um, to give you a, a full response. Um, Darren, are we, is, is it at 8.30, are we supposed to be wrapping up? Yes. Because So I just wanna say, um, you know, one of our goals in providing an amenity like this is obviously to provide a very specific need to people who have expressed it to us. Um, it's also to provide opportunities for people who don't have dogs to come together and gather in the park. And that's one of the reasons um, you know, the feedback about benches and seating areas is very important because we want um, the space there to be something that attracts all kinds of people. Um, parks are for bringing people together. Um, we understand that anytime we build a new amenity in a park that um, I have to say, I'm not sure it's ever been in my experience that um, it was, uh, you know, that the support was universal. We understand that there will always be pros and cons. And, you know, we take uh, our public outreach process seriously because we want to hear what people have to say and we want to hear why people want something and also the very valid reasons why they might not want something. So, you know, we, we want to thank you for attending this meeting, for giving us your honest and unfiltered 
feedback. We appreciate it. That's what we're here for. We will take all this back. We will figure out how to respond to it or incorporate it. Um, we will determine what kind of recommendation we want to make to parks leadership. And we um, pledge to keep you all informed. Darren, I don't know if you have something to add to that. That's perfect. Thank you, Mitty. Appreciate it. And with that, we will wrap up. I guess that concludes tonight's meeting. Appreciate mm -hmm. everybody's time. Thank you.